Hi, welcome. This is the Clement Z Elector. In this video, we will have a closer look at the Raspberry Pi Pico board. Now this is not just another Raspberry Pi board running a flavor of Linux. No, the Pico board is a microcontroller module based on the RP2040 microcontroller. Um, a microcontroller designed by Raspberry Pi themselves. Why design your own microcontroller instead of picking one from the huge pool of existing ones? Well, according to Raspberry Pi, none of the products available in the market met their price performance goals. Also, it allowed them to incorporate several innovative and powerful features not available elsewhere at any price. And finally, developing their own microcontroller has given them the opportunity to create a software stack and documentation set which is up to the high standards that they set themselves with the core Raspberry Pi products. The RP2040 microcontroller contains two ARM Cortex-M0 Plus cores uh, clocked at up to 133 MHz, uh, together with uh, 264 KB of RAM. Program memory is external and up to 16 MB is supported. The device has everything you expect from a modern microcontroller like a UART, a SPI and I2C ports, and there are timers, PWM, DMA and a 12-bit analog to digital converter. However, it also has some features that set the RP2040 apart, like its two PIO blocks. PIO stands for Programmable Input Output and it offers a versatile hardware interface that can support a variety of I.O. standards. Each PIO block contains four programmable state machines that can be viewed in a way as tiny microcontrollers. To stay in line with Raspberry Pi naming scheme, we could refer to them as Pico controllers. Their in and outputs can be connected to any GPIO pin and they can be reconfigured on the fly. Other features uh, intended to improve performance of the RP2040 are built-in libraries for single precision floating point calculations, fast bit manipulations and memory move and copy functions. According to Raspberry Pi, the RP2040 with its two cores, PIO module and built-in libraries should be able to compete with ARM Cortex-M4 based devices. There are two ways of programming the RP2040, with and without tools. When the MCU is connected to a USB host, the device shows up as a mass storage device to which new applications can be copied. When the file has the correct format, it is copied to RAM or flash memory and then executed. This method does not need special tools uh, for device programming. For volume production, such a way of device programming is not always practical, and so the RP2040 is also equipped with a serial wire debug or SWD port uh, that supports application programming. It also supports code debugging, of course. Interestingly, the SWD pins of the cores can be bit banked, which allows code running on one core to be debugged by the other. Connecting an external debugger is of course also possible and probably faster. The Raspberry Pi Pico is the first microcontroller based on the RP2040. It is aimed at both the makers and volume applications. It looks a lot like other popular microcontroller boards with the MCU in the center. A micro USB connector on one end, a row of contacts along each side, and a 3 pin debug connector is available at the other end of the board. The Raspberry Pi Pico measures 51 by 21 mm, which is the exact same size as an ESP32 Pico kit. So, what's in the name? It is slightly larger than an Arduino Nano or Micro and a bit smaller than an Arduino MKR0, which is also based on an ARM Cortex M0 Plus device but single core. The R Pico retails for around 5 euros, which is similar to the STM32 Blue Pill board, which has an ARM Cortex M3 MCU on it. The R Pico comes with 2 MB of QSPI flash memory, and 26 of the 30 GPIO pins on the RP2040 have been brought out on the extension connectors. To create applications for the RP2040 and the Pico board, you must install the SDK. 
Uh, it provides the headers, the libraries, and build system necessary to write programs in C, C++, or assembly language. With it, you can build anything from simple LED blinky programs up to full-fledged runtime environments uh, such as MicroPython, and you can even build the RP2040's boot ROM. The SDK also takes care of integrating the libraries present in the MCU's ROM into your code, so no headaches there. A library of predefined PIO functions is included in the SDK, but you can, of course, also build your own. As several of these pre-built blocks concern graphical applications, like LED string and display drivers, we may expect to see many RP2040s pop up in multimedia applications. As a matter of fact, one of the demo applications for the Pico board is a VGA movie player, where the MCU's PIO blocks generate the video signal in real time. The SDK runs, uh, of course, on a Raspberry Pi, but not only. I installed it on a Raspberry Pi 400. After installation, an entry is added to the programming menu that gives access to the Visual Studio Code Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. The Pico board itself can either be connected to a USB port for drag and drop programming, or to the RPI's 40 pin extension connector and then use GDB and OpenOCD over SWD. This makes for a convenient development system. For those who prefer programming in Python, there is MicroPython. This runs on the RPICO, either after building it yourself or by dropping a pre-compiled binary on it. Because MicroPython is very much like normal Python, the RPICO board can, in theory, run Python applications that were developed for another Raspberry Pi board. This is great for systems where a Raspberry Pi 4 or so would be overkill. If the application is not too complex and does not require specific Raspberry Pi peripherals, it may even run on the RPICO without modification, turning it into a kind of simple Raspberry Pi compute module. Note that the MicroPython port for the Pico includes multi-core support. By developing their own microcontroller, Raspberry Pi has probably surprised more people than just me. With the RP2040 they have come up with an interesting device that will prove useful in many applications. Its programmable I.O. blocks provide almost unrivaled flexibility. The low-cost Raspberry Pi Pico board makes the RP2040 accessible for both makers and professional users, as it is suitable for deeply embedded applications as well as breadboarded prototypes. The toolchain allows application development in C, C++ and MicroPython. Arduino support is probably not far away, and other RP2040 based ports are expected to appear soon. Hey Eben, this is Massimo. Massimo Banzi from Arduino. What are you doing? Do you want to kill my business? Raspberry Pi's original goal was to make computing accessible to everyone. With the RP2040 microcontroller and the Pico board, they try to do the same for microcontrollers. Whatever happens next, I think they have done an amazing job. Okay, that's it. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, click or tap the bell button. Thank you for watching.